Hi there, David here. And if you wanna learn how to create sound effects, this is normally the right place to be, but today is gonna to be a little bit different. Uh, in this video, I actually wanna share and document uh, a little bit of what I've been doing over the past few weeks, and that is creating some Reaper scripts. So before we even get into this, I just wanna get out of the way the, the fact that I am by no means an expert in this area. I'm actually uh, pretty new. I, like I know basics about coding and stuff, but I did learn a lot over the past few weeks. And so I think everything I'm gonna share in this video and all the steps you can take if, if you're interested in, in, in learning how to script and, and doing uh, Reaper scripts and stuff like that, I think this is gonna help. Uh, it definitely would've been helpful if I had this kind of information back when I got started. So uh, yeah, let's just get out of the, let's just make sure we get that out of the way because uh, yeah, by no means an expert here. But I did learn so much and that's what I wanna share in this this video that and I basically want to give you a general overview of everything I've kind of learned and gone over over the past couple of weeks uh, to help me create Reaper scripts, especially for this kind of secret project that I've been working on, which uh, might be out at the time of this, the release of this video. Um, but if not, keep an eye out because I will be releasing a kind of new product around this topic. All right, so let's start back at the beginning here. For me, this began around the time that ChatGPT came out. And when ChatGPT first came out, uh, it was cool. A lot of people were using it for like writing, blogging, um, helping with writing essays, stuff like that. It was basically like a writer's thing, at least from what I saw a lot of people using it for, that's what it was mostly used for. And then eventually I noticed that some people were saying that it could now code and you could have ChatGPT help you code with stuff. So I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. And I never really got into it, never did anything with it um, until eventually I was, you know, working my in my project and I, I really wanted some scripts to help me be more efficient in my workflow and what I was doing. So then that's when I started to actually use and go into ChatGPT uh, to help me create some, some scripts and see if it could help me with that. Now, if you don't know anything about scripting or coding, that's okay. Um, so what you could do and what I kind of started doing when I first got started is I would just have ChatGPT create some scripts for me. And then what I would do is I would then go into Reaper and I would start implementing those scripts and then testing them out and then going back to ChatGPT and going back and forth with it, uh, kind of like having a conversation and getting it to tweak things for me and, and, and going from there. So if you've never done this before, what you could do inside of Reaper here is in your actions list, you can just go here, new actions, and then you can hit new Rhea script. Now on here, you'll want to uh, have create a new folder. So I already have a, a folder for, for my scripts here. Uh, and But you want to create a new folder. And then from there, you can save it as a file. So let's say I want to save this as um, a new Reaper script. All right, so here I am in this new folder that I created. I can just create here a new Reaper script and hit save. And it's going to create a Lua file, which is basically a scripting language file. And so here it is, it opened it up. And now if I want to go back into um, ChatGPT here, I can just grab and copy the code that it gave me, go back into Reaper here, paste it in here, and then run it and see what happens. So right now it's telling me that no items were selected. So let's get some items in, in here and see if it actually works. All right, so this script, I don't actually know what it does, but I selected the item here. I can run it by pressing save, so control S to save it, and then it'll run it. So if I just, I'm on the I'm on the script here, and I just control S, you'll see it will we'll say saved and recompiled. And so that just means that it's 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 worked. There's no kind of issues in the script or anything, and, it, and it's gonna, and it's done. So if nothing happens, it's probably because the script is not doing anything, or at least not what I want it to do. So then I can go back and forth with ChatGPT and start creating some stuff from there. All right, and that's that's how I got started, just some simple ways like that. Now, once I had that going and I started getting scripts that were working and functioning, and I had a whole bunch of them that were really helping me, then it was a matter of, okay, how can I start sharing this with other people? And this is when we got to step number two. So the first step was working with ChatGPT. Second step here was learning Git, GitHub and Git Bash. All right, so if you're completely new to coding like I was, you probably don't even know what Git is, and that is totally okay. It's basically... Um, it's kind of like a software for version control. So it'll control the version of your code where it is. And then you can basically go back and forth between different versions if you want to. You can also like branch off and create uh, like a new feature in your code and then merge it back into the main function. So the reason why this is important or this works is because think of it like... Um, Google Docs or a Word document. You're typing a, a, a document and you're you're pressing save and maybe even you even have an auto save function. Well, that's great, but um, you know the document is always going to be functional. It's just it auto saves based on where you are in that moment in time. But for code, it's not always functional. Like if if you, if you're only half if you only have half written code, you don't want it to auto save because it won't be functional. It won't work. Right. That's where Git comes in because um, you can save it at a certain point in time when the code is functional. So you have to do it manually, and that's what Git does. So let's say I have a code that works. I'll show you right here in my project. 
All right, so let's say I have some scripts here that work, okay? And now let's say I have this one simple uh, simple script number one here that is, it's done, it's working, it's actually complete, it, it, everything functions really well. Um, I can save that here, and maybe I wanna save it now so that um, I, I can save version number one. This would be like maybe let's say version number one, okay? So if we wanna open this, now, I highly suggest, by the way, this is something I didn't know, but if you don't have Visual Studio Code, uh, it's different from Microsoft Visual Studio. They're two different things, but Visual Studio Code is really great for coding. I would highly suggest getting that if you don't have it. And um, that's kind of what I used for my um, coding here. And, and then, so you can see here, I just have a, a message inside a Reaper that would say, hello world, right? And the title of the message box would be message box header title. So it's a super simple script, but if I save it here, um, this would be version number one. And I can save it at this moment in time. Now, if uh, uh, so what you want to do for that is you can load git uh, bash, or you can also use other software, but feel for me, this is what I used. And then I don't want to go too deep into, into this because this can this tutorial can get super long, especially like you can do a whole like multi-hour tutorial just on git here and git bash. Um, but I, what basically what I want to do is I wanted to show it this directory, which means I want to show it this folder. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say, hey, look at this folder here. So CD stands for change directory. You can just click on the header here and click Control C for copy and paste. And then I'm gonna just insert it here, which is Shift uh, Insert. And then I'm just gonna enter it here. And now you can see that it's looking at that folder. So now what I could do is I could initialize the folder and then it would basically install Git into this folder here. So anytime there's any changes inside of this folder and any subfolders under it, it's gonna I, I'm gonna be able to see it and I can create versions from it right from here. So I would have to Git init to install it on there. I don't wanna do that. But yeah, one, once you do that, you can start creating these versions. Like I said, I'm not gonna do a deep dive tutorial because it can take a long time. That's not the point of this video, but I just wanna show you that uh, this is a great way to start learning how to create versions of your software and to keep track of them all inside of a folder. So that, that's kind of what I did here. This is the first thing I did is learn, learn the basics of Git and how it works and, and what it can do. All right, once I had Git kind of under my belt, if you will, uh, I had the basics understood, then it was a matter of moving now to GitHub and GitHub, is not that complicated. It's basically the same thing as Git, except it's in a room in, in, in the cloud. So while Git will be on your computer, on your on your personal computer, Git will be on a remote server in the cloud. So basically, you would have, or ideally, what you would do is you would have the same copy that's on your computer. You would have the uh, an exact copy in the cloud, and then from there you can share it with other people. So right, so that's why it's useful to have it in the cloud so that other people can also access it, or you can just choose to distribute it if you want to. Right. So for example, here is somebody's GitHub. This is actually Christian Filion, and if I'm not mistaken, and I think he's the one who actually created Reapack. Um, might be mistaken, but anyways. So he has a whole bunch of different repositories. You can click on his repositories here, and then you can see all of these repositories that he has. And if we remember from what I said before, a repository is basically whatever you created here on your computer where you installed Git. So if I install Git in this folder, this folder and all, all subfolders inside of this folder, this is a repository, right? So um, these repositories here that, that Chris uh, Christian here has online is basically a reflection of what he has on his computer. There are different folders that he has on his computer, right? So if we look into, let's say, for example, read scripts here, you can see he has all of these different scripts uh, that he has uh, available. So you can probably come in here and, and, and get them from here. All right, so GitHub is great, um, but ideally you don't want to share direct links to your GitHub with other people because uh, even if they did get your scripts, you wouldn't be able to share with them when it's updated, what updated, what changed, and stuff like that. So it's kind of missing some features in that way. That's kind of where uh, Reapack comes in. And basically what Reapack is, if you don't already know, it is a, it's kind of like a portal that you install in Reaper. So let me show you. So in Reaper here, I already have it installed here, but here you can see I have uh, Reapack. If you want to install it, I'll have links in the description below if you want to learn how to install it. But basically, it's kind of like a portal where you can import repositories. And like we said before, repositories are basically just folders and, and groups of uh, subfolders inside of a folder um, that will basically usually will have scripts in them. So here, uh, once you have somebody's URL for the repository, you can paste it in here, click OK. And you can see here, I have uh, already have, if I can manage my repositories, I already have all of these different repositories from all these people that have created scripts for Reaper that extends Reaper's functionality and that help me create sounds faster and better, right? So all of those are right here and I can download scripts from that. Right, and this is done automatically. So it's, like I said, Reaper, Reapack is kind of like a portal. So I can synchronize packages, which is basically gonna update them to their newest version based on the uh, GitHub version that, that these people have made, right? So it's just automatic. Like I don't, I don't have to worry and check if, if they're new or whatnot, if they're up to date, what version it's at, stuff like that. Like everything's already gonna be automatically up, uh, updated if I press synchronize packages. 
All right, so that is Reapack for from the end user's point of view. But now from uh, if you're someone who wants to create scripts and uh, write scripts and share scripts with others, how do you go from sharing, from having something on GitHub, a, re a repository on GitHub with all your scripts on there, and then sharing that with other people? Well, how do you do that? So let me show you that really quickly. Like I said here with um, Christian Filion here, he has some repositories. And one of his repositories is... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of these two here. I'll have a, oh no, it's this one right here. Reapack repository template. So this is a template of what you want to install on your account, on your uh, GitHub account to have the exact same uh, repository in your account. So, and what's great about this is uh, if you're signed in, I'm not signed in right now, but if you're signed in, it'll have a button at the very top here where it says, um, click here to use this template or something like that. And then uh, you just say, a new repository, and then it'll automatically create this repository in your account. And the reason why this is great is because it basically has a bot that is installed on there that automatically generates an index.xml file for you. And this XML file is actually what you give users to put in the uh, Reaper repository. So when they put it into here, that's, that's the URL that you want in there. And this, this bot automatically updates it based on what you have based on what you have here in your GitHub repository. So that's why this template is really great. It's like, you don't have to worry about connections or like how to make things work. You can do it manually. Now I'll also have a description below, uh, a video below to show you if you want to ever do manually and you don't want to use this, like it's totally fine. It's just, um, it's nice to have this. And right, and here, what's also great about this repository template here is that there's a kind of a guide on how to connect with Reapack how to make sure that everything's uh, in accordance with Reapack. You also have a packaging document here, which basically tells you like inside of your scripts, here's what you need in your header. Here's what you need that Reapack, the, the, the information that Reapack needs to have in order to be able to list your things on, on Reapack and to have it being able, able to be imported into Reaper. Right, so you have to make sure that inside of your individual scripts. So if I go into my Visual Studio here, inside of my code here, like, this one load into Reapack because I don't have the header, right? So if I want to have a header that was proper, I would have to do something like, uh, I would I need a version, so add version, and then I would need to do something like that, right? That's the minimum I think that you need. You need to have some sort of version, but there's also other things like your description, your about, and other tags that you want to have in there. Anyways, so it's all described into this in this document right here, which is great if you are someone who wants to create risk scripts and, and share them. All the information is right here. All right, so now for number five here, um, the thing that I learned is to start uploading your stuff to GitHub. And to do that, it's pretty simple. Let me show you. So once you are inside of here, inside of GitHub, like I said, this is just a template. I don't want to show you mine right now because it's not quite ready. Uh, but let's say, uh, so there's an example here. Let's say this was your script or inside of here, you can have a whole bunch of your scripts. Like you can see here, you can see he has a hello world script dot Lua. That's a script here. So this is the script if you want to click on it. So if I get out of it, this is the script. You can have a whole bunch of scripts here. Like you could have 20 scripts if you wanted to, right? So, and the package for this script is called example. It could be called, I don't know, like whatever your name is, uh, Reapack scripts. That could be it. It could be called, I don't know, uh, scripts for moving items in Reaper, right? Whatever you want to name your, your collection of scripts, that could be the name here. That's just a, a folder name. And then here you have all of your, all of your scripts that you created for that, right? So when you first import this into your, into your own personal GitHub repository, you can delete this folder here and then you can just import a new folder. I usually do this with, uh, I did this with Visual Studio Code. So inside of here, if I went here and I did a new file, you can import a whole folder in here with all your scripts in there and it'll show them in here and you'll be able to see the whole folder uh, with all the scripts in there. What's great about it is as well is that if you have GitHub installed and it's connected to, or sorry, if you have Git installed in that folder and it's connected to your GitHub, it'll automatically, you'll automatically be able to sync it, which is a lot easier than, than doing pushes and uh, like push, git pull and git push uh, to be able to get everything working properly. So that's just a bonus of, ver ver of working with visual code, um, sorry, visual studio code, which is also why I really recommend it. Right, once you have all these things in place, uh, the last thing that you do is you can just share your X, uh, XML uh, link and let me show you how to do that or where that is. So like I said before, so in your GitHub repository, you need to have this index.xml uh, file, and this should be at the bottom of the root folder here. So you can just click on this. And the link that you actually wanna send uh, and share with others is the raw version of the link here. And you can just click up here, copy, paste, and, and share that with others. And then they can then put that into here. Like if I wanted to, I could go right in here, import repository, and I could put that right there and then I could click okay. And then it would import uh, that hello world uh, script into here. Now I don't want to do that, but if you wanted to, that's what you could do and that's how you do it. All right, lastly, a few little uh, things that were kind of 
uh, tricky for me to figure out, but like um, one of the things is that when you are creating your scripts, make sure that your your header uh, metadata, which is the part in your script that that uh, Reapack is going to read through to make sure that they, it gets all the information right. Like for example, like who made the the, the pack about the the author, which would be your name, uh, the version, uh, like v one point zero point zero. Make sure all that stuff is filled out. Like I said, I'll have the documentation uh, down in the link below. But make sure that is all filled up. And then when you are importing or, or syncing that to your GitHub account online in the cloud, make sure that every time you're making changes to your scripts that you increase the version number. Because if you don't increase it, GitHub will not... Uh, actually, it'll show in GitHub what it is, but what what will happen is that the XML file will not upgrade or update because the version number didn't update or upgrade. So your scripts are going to stay in their, in their... Let's say you had version zero. Uh, it's going to stay at version zero unless you increase it to version one, right? Once you're at version one, then it'll check all of the changes that you made and it will update your script. So if you don't do that, uh, yeah, it won't check. So make sure you always increase the version as you make changes because or else it will not update in your, in your, uh, in, in GitHub. Yeah. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense, but that is something that I had <laughs> kind of struggled to figure out and it's kind of annoying, but there you go. Now, now you know. All right. So I hope that's kind of useful and valuable. Like I said, the point of this video is not so much to go into detail about everything, but more to outline kind of the steps you can take if you want to start uh, scripting, learning how to script, uh, the tools and stuff that you need to do that. And like I said, I'm going to put all these resources that I mentioned in this video uh, down below. So make sure to check those out because they actually go in depth into like everything that you need to be able to go from like nothing to be able to share your scripts online on Reapack uh, with others. So I hope you found this useful and I hope you found this video valuable. And if you want to see another video about scripts, I made a whole uh, video about the, what I believe are the best sound design scripts for Reaper. So if you are a sound designer and you want to check that out, I'll have it on the screen here. And I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way through to the end and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.